So Mars Red with episodes 9 and 10 coming in hot. Episode 9 was a bit slower for sure with episode 10 just kind of like upping the momentum in more ways than one. Obviously I didn't review episode 9 as a standalone last week and most likely I'm going to do episodes 11 and 12 together as well with then episode 13 being its own review. Mainly just because like it's been getting a little more hectic on Mondays for me and it just feels like with the way the end game is structured, joining two episodes together, there's a lot more to discuss than just having it be a standalone. And honestly, I'm glad I watched episodes 9 and 10 pretty much back to back. I watched episode 9 this morning. This episode 10 came in and just kind of hit me like a truck. I think it's very interesting to see the kind of shattering of what used to be this cast. I mean, with episode 9, you literally have a confrontation between best boy ninja and you know new main character and we're like okay what the hell is Kurosu and Sua gonna do are they going to kill each other no misunderstanding for sure but like they're really starting to shake up the cast Maida himself is the biggest curveball we get a glimpse of it with last week at the end of the episode this week comes in and the best thing I could probably say about what's happening is he's most likely lost his marbles after becoming a vampire and I feel like either next week or the week after is when maybe he'll regain part of his composure and he'll most likely end up dead before the show's over. I could very well see Maida end up killing himself for the greater good, but it'll be interesting to see where they take it. The biggest questions I definitely have are, does Nakajima like seriously not know what's going on or did he seriously just lose his marbles? I don't think I've missed anything. I think it's more of like an endgame plot because a man who is so bound and bent to prevent other people from dying in a war no more sending young men to war to die, he's kind of like been part of the cause of an entire civilization turned into vampires as you watch little boys and girls, you know, rush to grab a rat to eat as they burst into flames. This is a character I really want to see, like, has he really turned a blind eye to all this? Or, you know, did he really not see that Rufus and him, you know, they weren't really on the same page? Rufus is another character who I have to say... The man's kind of an idiot. The one vampire who wasn't on his bad side, or at the very least, wasn't actively going against him, that being defraud, he kidnaps his, like, wannabe big sister and is trying to kill him just to cover the tracks. You seriously ended up making an enemy out of every vampire, seemingly, because you're trying to cover your own tracks, but seemingly it's just biting you in the ass. I mean, it's possible Might is working with him because he's been controlled, but like, I honestly feel like nothing's going to go according to Rufus's plan for too long, and he's probably going to end up with one of the more brutal deaths for sure. The episodes were pretty much just kind of like finding your composure. Episode 9 was trying to bring what was left of the cast back together. There was some hostility, and then it pretty much ended in them kind of like trying to just stay alive. There isn't much of a pushback to try to stop these soldiers from marching in the streets, you can't do a hell of a lot, so what can you do other than hopefully wait it out for the time being? And to actually see the scientists say there might be a way in theory to let vampires age. And that's been a pretty like heavy theme in, I would say, Kurosu's plotline for this arc. Because he's with people who can't age. We're with kids and people who seriously are saying, I think it was in episode 10, that they probably would rather be dead than to continue on as a vampire. It may take a hundred years, but when you're a vampire and you can't die unless you walk into the sunlight or don't eat blood, I mean, you have time on your side. If this man actually finds a way to let vampires age, I think that'd be an interesting ending because you would think either the people who've turned into a vampires have to be killed or they just have to carry on with their life, but how can you carry on with your life when you can't age? You'll be stuck as you are. But if this man can actually find a way to let vampires age, they essentially will be able to go on as they always have been. The only difference is they'll have to use an umbrella outside to shield them from the sun. But I think that will be a big difference for a lot of these people who were literally forcibly turned into a vampire and just wanted to have a normal life. It's an interesting concept that I really don't remember ever seeing in a vampire story. The idea of like, you know, really putting the focus on the inability to age and then having a scientist trying to basically overcome that obstacle and I think that'll be pretty interesting. I'm really fascinated to see like what Midas' purpose will be. He's definitely been removed for a few episodes now. And that, I mean, while watching the past two episodes, I was questioning, I was like, there's got to be either a reason for it. It's going to be because you need to put more focus on the side cast, or it's going to be a relevant plot thing. And I think it's kind of a combination of both. We need to have characters like Kurosu kind of rise to the occasion, become the main character in a lot of ways, while simultaneously giving something for Mida to really shake the foundation. I mean, 
we had Yamagami give up his life saying, don't become a vampire for Nakajima, right? He's not a good person. You don't want to become this. He had a life-threatening injury. Defrock gave him a second chance, but seemingly he survived it, but he seemingly has lost his marble. So if he can regain his composure, he might be able to take down the crazy shit that's going on, combined with a scientist hopefully allowing vampires to age, maybe even creating a vaccine that could maybe reverse the damage that's been done. Who knows? Either way, it's definitely progressing in a way that I never could have seen coming a few weeks back, maybe a month back, give or take. Mars Red continues to be underappreciated. It's a very cinematic experience. It feels like you're watching a play on a stage. But the way every character has had, I think, a moment in some way, like even the reporter side, right? I thought that would have been something I really would give no shits about. From her getting kidnapped to even just the man that she works for, her boss, I really find them to be an engaging kind of like normal situation in the face of so much absurdity with blood-sucking vampires. The biggest thing that I honestly see no solution for is the giant hunks of metal walking the streets. While I could see them curing people in a way of letting vampires age, and I could see Maida taking down Rufus and his former leader, what do you do about these giant slabs? Is there an emergency shutdown? It's not like they're robots, right? They're vampires who have been controlled. Maybe it's also going to be some form of medication that has to be dispersed or given to them. Maybe they'll coat their weapons or something with some form of chemical that will bring them down. That's something I can't even begin to really speculate and have a confident theory on because it feels like there's no way to deal with that. And I mean, maybe the way to deal with it is to give normal society, vampires, and normal humans something that wards them off, so maybe they'll just continue to wander forever, not actually attack anyone because nothing appears to be an enemy. Hard to say, right? But I mean, watching episodes 9 and 10, 9 being one of the weaker episodes in Mars Red for me, good episode, but nothing really all that explosive happens. It was more of an in-between, kind of bringing everyone together. Episode 10, kind of having shit hit the fan, and me questioning motivations, especially on Rufus and Nakajima's side, being like, what are you guys thinking and what is your true purpose here, besides seemingly chaos, and I guess episodes 11 through 13 will hopefully say as much. It is nice though that, like, every character is getting at least a moment to really build them out of just being the trope that I thought they'd be. Mad scientist who is a lunatic seemingly has a lot of good intentions, or I think my favorite would be in this week's episode, Sua, a character who had no problem killing vampire children and things like that, now is seemingly making bonds with these children, and they started off very fearful of him to now growing a pretty interesting bond. Everyone's definitely getting a lot more spotlight now that Might has been removed from the equation, so as much as I'm glad that he's back, even if he has turned into a crazy bastard, I'm glad that the sidecasts have been really fleshed out because... I never thought that would happen in the first few episodes. I thought maybe one or two of them, Maida and maybe another couple, would be really interesting. But seriously, the cast has really evolved into a really well-written dynamic that I never thought possible for a 13-episode original. I really thought I'd come up here by the end saying, you know, I really wish it was a two-core, but seriously, 13 episodes seems like the perfect pace to me. I'd love to know everyone's thoughts and feelings, though, on the latest episodes of Mars Red, and where do you think it might go in the endgame now that we have approached the finish line, but the finish line still has a lot more left to see for us as a viewer, apparently. I mean, unless they really just slow it down again, but I don't see how you can slow it down after the end of episode 10. So let me know your feelings down below, drop a like to help promote the video, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.